U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited Israel on Tuesday after stops in Saudi Arabia and Jordan amid efforts to reach a peace deal in Gaza. The top U.S. diplomat met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, privately and then with the U.S. and Israeli delegations. According to readout from the U.S. State Department, the sides discussed ongoing efforts to reach an immediate ceasefire in Gaza as part of a hostage deal and emphasized that it is Hamas that is standing in the way of a ceasefire. The U.S. diplomat said the time is now for a deal to bring about a ceasefire in Gaza and free the remaining hostages held there. Blinken called on Hamas to accept the deal. Blinken reiterated his country's clear position that Israel should not launch a military incursion into the southern city of Rafa without effective plan to make sure that civilians are not harmed. The top U.S. diplomat also met Israeli President Isaac Herzog in Tel Aviv. We are determined to get a ceasefire that brings the hostages home and to get it now, and the only reason that that wouldn't be achieved is because of Hamas," Blinken said during the meeting with Herzog. The proposed deal between Hamas and Israel reportedly involves a 40-day ceasefire and the release of more than 30 Israeli hostages in exchange for many more Palestinian prisoners. Blinken later visited Israel's Ashdod port, about 30 kilometers north of Gaza, where he hailed Israel for making concessions to reach a hostage and ceasefire deal. Blinken later visited key border crossing Karim Shalom that has been central to getting aid into Gaza. Russian army restores old military equipment due to shortage at front. Russian army restores old military equipment due to a shortage of vehicles at the front, according to Atesh Partisan Movement. Atesh agents conducted a reconnaissance of a warehouse of non-working equipment of one of the military units in the Gagarin district of Sevastopol. As it turned out, the Russian soldiers restored equipment from this warehouse for military needs. This demonstrates that the enemy has significant problems with military equipment, which once again confirms the information from our agents from the Russian armed forces. The partisan said, Atesh agents also spotted a Russian radar system located near a military unit in Sevastopol. Having launched a full-scale war against Ukraine, Russia has been unable to abandon the use of Soviet-era military equipment despite boasting in previous years about the production and supply of modern equipment to their troops. This new equipment includes the T-72B3M, T-80BVM and T-90M main battle tanks, BTR-82A armored personnel carriers, BMP-2M infantry fighting vehicles, BMPT terminator fire support vehicles, along with various others. The massive losses of Russia's newest military equipment in the first months of the invasion has led to Russia being forced to reactivate and refurbish older models for deployment in order to plug capability gaps incurred through losses. Since the start of the war, Russia has removed approximately over 40% of its Soviet-era tanks and armored personnel carriers from the largest mothballed equipment base in Buratia. This certainly represents a significant figure, but Russia has another 20 smaller, similar storage bases which can also be used to reconstitute units destroyed in combat. As high-intensity military operations continued, the share of modern military equipment in Russian stocks has fallen, leading to greater reliance on older Soviet-era equipment in many units.